Hi, this is Katie. In today's video, I'm going to do a little health update on my esophagus disease and also on my liver tumor. I went to a doctor recently and then I also went again today to a doctor to get something done. And I just wanted to give you a little update on what's going on with my health. And so if you haven't been around the last year and a half since I've been sick, I'm going to do a tiny little update, but I also will have like longer videos explaining what's going on linked up here. So basically about a year and a half ago, I got really sick. Like I could not swallow food or water without horrific pain in my chest. And so I had to go see a ton of different doctors. I had to get a lot of tests and procedures done. And basically what they found out was that I have this rare esophagus disease called eosinophilic esophagitis or EOE for short. It's not curable. It is treatable, but it's not curable. It's autoimmune. It's chronic, obviously. And there are some treatments for it. So basically the first treatments that they gave me to help that really severe chest pain were like acid reflux medicine, basically like a PPI and like a really strong type of like Tums medicine. And that did after a few weeks help subside that really, really, really strong pain. So I was on that for a little while, but then realized it wasn't really helping anymore. So I did end up stop taking that like a year ago. However, I was still pretty sick. A lot of my symptoms after that severe pain subsided, a lot of my symptoms were kind of like feeling like I was choking and feeling a lot of like pressure in my throat and in like my chest and like all like right here, basically in my esophagus. Some nausea, some headaches sometimes, a lot of like exhaustion, but a lot of it was like esophagus tightness. Um, and then also some like acid reflux and heartburn type symptoms on top of that as well. And then the other treatment that's like the main treatment for EOE is changing your diet. And so I'll get to the tumor in a second, by the way, because they're not actually connected, but just the same doctor checks both of them. So I'm just going to do updates on both of those in this video, but I'm going to do the EOE first. And so they told me to cut out a ton of different food, not only for acid reflux, but also for EOE. And so basically if you've watching my videos over the last year, year and a half, you would see that I have changed my diet so many times. I've cut out so many different foods. And the reason that they have people with EOE cut out a lot of foods is because it's an allergy related disease. And so kind of the thought process was if I could find the foods that I'm allergic to with an elimination diet, because like prick tests and stuff don't work for that. So if I could do an elimination diet and find out the foods that I'm allergic to, and then if I can cut them out, then I might start to feel a little bit better. So I've been doing that for the last year, year and a half. I cut out a ton of foods and then I'd add them back, see if they made me sick. I was going through that for a really long time. And I did find a couple foods that made me sick, like dairy, tomatoes, um, rice, but not rice flour, which is confusing. And then a couple other like vegetables and a bunch of other different foods that I have found out that made me sick. However, you might know that almost every single day, no matter what I eat, I still feel sick. I still feel the tightness in my esophagus. I still feel like I'm choking. I still sometimes get nausea or headache. And that happens almost every single day, not every single day, but I would say like 29 out of 30 days, I get noticeable discomfort or pain. You know, sometimes I'm kind of okay where it's just, you know, discomfort, but I'm still okay to do day to day kind of things. And sometimes it's bad enough that I can barely get out of bed. It just kind of depends on the day. It depends on what I'm eating. It depends on a lot of different things, but I have not found the correct diet that really, really, really decreases these symptoms. You know, again, I found some of the foods that make it a lot worse, but I have not found a diet that decreases all of the symptoms at all. And I've been doing that for about a year. And so sometimes it's gotten a little discouraging, but I was still like, no, I'm still going to keep changing my diet and see what's going on. And I knew that there were a couple other treatments, but I wanted to like really focus on the diet because I knew that I can control that, you know, and I would much prefer me personally. I'd much prefer changing my diet than being on medication. I don't really want to be on meds unless I have to. And so anyway, I ended up going back to a gastroenterologist about a week and a half ago at this point. And I told her like, I'm just not feeling any better. I don't know if I need another endoscopy. I don't know what to do. And she was like, I don't think you need another endoscopy because we know what you have. We know what symptoms you have. So we can just treat you without another endoscopy right now. She's like, maybe in the future, but right now she's like, I don't think you need one. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, I tried the PPI and I tried the diet and it's been like, you know, almost a year and a half at this point. And what she said to me 
was something that I was not expecting to hear because I have been telling myself and what I heard from some other doctors is that try the diet, try the diet, see if the diet helps. And the way that I processed that information was if I find the right foods, my symptoms will decrease. And I think in my head, I thought of it as a will. They will decrease. You know, like I didn't necessarily think that they'll go away forever, but I was thinking if I found the right foods and cut them out and if I found the right diet that I wouldn't have the noticeable symptoms every single day. You know, maybe it'll decrease enough that I don't notice it every single day. So when I went to this doctor a week and a half ago and I told her what was going on and I told her I still the symptoms no matter how much I've changed my diet and I've gotten really strict with it, you know, she said to me, oh yeah, you probably won't feel better with the diet. Like no matter what you do, you probably won't feel better. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. And I guess the diet does help some people, but especially since I cut out like most foods, like there was literally a week that all I was eating was like beef and avocado, like, and I've cut out so many different foods and I've gotten really, really strict with it. She just basically told me that at this point, for me specifically, at least she's like, the diet probably won't help you feel any better than you, you know, than maybe you're already feeling. So like, it probably won't help. And I was like, okay, I didn't really think that before. Like in my head, obviously I knew it wasn't curable, but in my head, I just kept saying, if I find the right foods that I'll feel better. The doctor was like, no, probably not. It's possible, of course, but probably not, especially at this point. And I'm like, okay, well, the PPIs didn't help either. So now what? And she's like, well, there's a couple other treatments, but in all honesty, none of them will probably help you. It was a weird thing to hear. And of course that was just her one opinion. But again, with how I'm feeling and all the research and stuff that I've done and with how long it's been, I do believe her. And I did speak to another doctor and he's like, yeah, your symptoms won't ever really fully go away. He's like, but it still is possible they can decrease a little bit, you know? Basically, I just think that I've almost been like lying to myself a little bit because you know what? I probably knew this a year ago. I probably knew that it was unlikely, but I was just so focused on feeling better. I think that, you know, being positive is a good thing. I really do. I think that working hard on things, I think that focus, I think that determination are great things to have. But I also think it's really good to be realistic, especially when it comes to facts, you know? And so when we're talking about goals or something, I believe in really lofty goals. But if we're talking about facts, I do believe that it's good to know all the facts that we can and then actually have like a realistic expectation mixed in with what we're working on. You know what I mean? And so, yes, of course, there still is a chance that I can feel better with the diet or these other treatments because I did start one of the other treatments already. And I'm pretty sure the treatment she just gave me, she even said that she's never seen anyone feel better on this, but it's still worth trying. And so I'm doing that. It's essentially like a steroid that I'm taking and it's only for two months. And she's like, well, if you don't see anything after two months, it definitely won't help. There are one or two other things. One is more PPIs, one is a shot, but I'd have to do a lot more research on those to see the probability that they would help and then also side effects and stuff. And even if I did do either of those, it would be months and months from now. So basically I wanted to do this update because first of all, this is very hard for me to record. Very hard for me to record. This is my fourth time trying to record this video because I feel like I just keep forgetting to say things or stumbling on my words or saying things weirdly or wrong or whatever. But basically this doctor, and again, also with what I'm really feeling, my personal experience and also some research, but this doctor told me that it's very unlikely that I'll ever really feel better, maybe a little bit, but that I'm going to be sick the rest of my life. And not only am I gonna be sick the rest of my life, but it's very likely that I'm gonna have these symptoms of feeling like I'm choking and feeling this discomfort and feeling like pressure basically every single day for the rest of my life. And again, I don't want that to like discourage me. I don't mean that like I'm giving up hope and nothing like that. No, no, no. Like I'm not being like a negative Nancy. I'm not giving up at all, but I like to be realistic. And I'm one of those people that like, if I know something is a fact that I have this rare disease that is a fact I found out through a biopsy and I am just someone who'd rather be more realistic than just fake positive. And so again, I think for me, what being realistic is, is yes, still focusing on my diet. Yes, still seeing if there's a food that really hurts, cut it out and see, you know, but I'm not going to do the drastic diet changes anymore. I am still going to understand that there is a chance that I'm going to feel better. And so I'm going to take the necessary actions that would help me feel better. But also on top of that, for me, I know it's helpful to wrap my head around the whole situation, not just look at the positive or not even just look at the negative. I like to look at everything. I also think that it's important for me personally, this is just how I deal with things. I think it's really important for me to process it in a healthy way so that I can take care of myself in a proper way. Instead of I'll get better one day, I'll get better one day, I'll get better one day. I think it's healthier for me to be like, I probably won't get better one day. So now what do I do with that information? 
How do I help myself through that? What accommodations do I need through that? How do I need to change my life because of that? So instead of kind of pushing that down and ignoring it, I know that I need to come to terms with it and see what I can do to help myself through it. So I'm going to do that while I'm also still working on getting better. Because honestly, I think for the last year, especially when I've been making videos and talking about like, oh, you know, I kind of feel okay or whatever. I think I've been kind of lying to myself and gaslighting myself a little bit, honestly. And I didn't mean to, it was an accident. I think that I just got so like, well, I feel a lot better than I did when it first started. So therefore I'm fine. When in reality, it's like, nope, eating still causes me discomfort or pain almost every single time I eat. And there are lots of days nowadays, it almost honestly feels like it's getting a little bit worse because honestly, there are so many days nowadays where I can barely get out of bed because I'm so exhausted, because I'm nauseous, because I have a headache, because of something like going on, because I'm just in pain. And I think that I've almost been gaslighting myself about it and just treating myself like I'm just not handling it well enough. When in reality, no, I have a chronic illness. And again, I think that in some of my videos, I've been like, oh no, I've been feeling okay. When in reality, what I meant is that I feel better than I did when I got really, really sick. And I'm very grateful for that. However, still don't feel good still really don't feel good. And some days again, I can manage it. And other days it's much harder. I think all of us sometimes might do this, but I think that what I did was I heard really bad news. You have this rare incurable disease in your esophagus and you're going to have it for the rest of your life, but here's some treatments. And I think my brain, even though again, I'm not like a fake positive person, but I think my brain processed that as, okay, here's the treatment, change your diet. And I don't think that I ever really like processed anything else. Like, I don't think I like grieved the idea of ever really feeling okay again. I don't think I really did that. And I know some people without chronic illness might not really know what I'm talking about, but I just hope that you believe me. Not necessarily because I need like external validation. I just hope that you are understanding what I'm saying because I am not that uncommon. There are lots of people, it's not the majority by any means, but there are lots of people out there with chronic illness and that you might see them walking around the grocery store, but it might be like the hardest thing they've done that week because getting out of bed is so hard. Or you might see someone at a restaurant and they're eating and they're laughing with their friends, but in reality, you don't know if they have some disease that they're scared of what they're eating right now, but they're just putting on a smile because they're trying to enjoy their lives, you know? And of course, I'm so grateful that I can eat a lot better than I used to be able to. And there's a lot less pain, but I also don't want to like gaslight myself and lie to myself and just be like, well, no, Katie, you're barely in any pain. You're fine. When in reality, it's like, well, some days I can't get out of bed because of how sick I feel or how exhausted I feel. And eating is still hard. I haven't eaten at a restaurant in over a year. It's changed a lot of my life. And I just think that I've been gaslighting myself a little bit and like not letting myself acknowledge how sick I am. And again, I don't want to ever act like I'm complaining or like, what was me of the worst life in the world? No, but I just do think that if something bad happens, it's good to process it and not just like ignore it or push it to the side. And I just think maybe I've processed it a little bit, but I don't really think I fully have especially until I heard from the doctor last week or a week and a half ago that she's like, you probably won't feel better. But I wanted to make this video, again, not to complain or be like, what was me? Or like beg for sympathy or anything like that. I do always appreciate when you guys are kind though. Like I really do. But I made this video to share with you guys because I've shared this whole journey with you. And maybe some of you guys can relate or maybe some of you guys are learning or maybe some of you guys just are curious about my life, but I'm just doing it to share with you. But it's really hard to share this kind of stuff because I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. And I think that I have focused so much on, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining that I do think that I've almost been gaslighting myself and lying to myself a little bit. Oh, well, you don't want to sound like you're complaining. So just kind of pretend that you're fine. Other people have it worse and you used to have it worse. So maybe you're just okay. And again, I do believe in being grateful, but I also want to be honest with myself. And if I'm not honest with myself, I'm not gonna be able to process it properly. And so now since it's been a week and a half, honestly, I spent the first week basically just in bed. First of all, I felt sick but I just basically was in bed, like miserable. That night I had a panic attack and I've not had a panic attack in like six months or maybe even more than that. I was just not doing well when I first hurt. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be sick forever. I'm gonna be sick forever. And no, I don't think that's me being a negative Nancy. Again, I know that we all do see the world differently and process information differently, but I see it as being realistic. And I would much rather accept the fact that I'm sick which I get, did you see? I even paused there because it's weird for me to say because I don't want to sound like I'm complaining, but it's like, I know that I'm not. I'm just telling you what's really going on. But then it's like, I don't know. It's, it's just weird for me to talk about it sometimes, but I want to accept the fact that I have this disease so that again, I can accommodate my life correctly instead of just ignoring it and then almost treating myself like I'm a healthy, regular person and then getting mad at myself when I fail at doing that. I think I just need to 
help myself a little bit more instead of just like ignoring certain things that that's something that I struggle with. So that's kind of the update on that. I am still going to work on getting better, but with just better and healthier, realistic expectations of that. And then taking care of myself also, like while I'm sick and giving myself more grace, you guys know I'm not really good at that, but giving myself more grace and just being more honest with myself and being more honest with you guys. I'm really sorry if it comes off as complaining. It's frustrating to go through this. It's scary to go through this. And sometimes it's really overwhelming to talk about it. And it's really overwhelming to go through it. So that's kind of the update on that. And then in terms of my tumor, really quick update, I've known that I've had this really benign liver tumor for like 13 years. And when they were doing all the tests on my esophagus last year, they found that my liver tumor was pushing on my stomach. And so they're like, you might need more tests. It might be growing, you know, because when they found it out years ago, they said it's super benign. It is the size of a baseball though. Like it's quite large in my liver. It's like this big in my liver. They're like, yes, it is large. It is in your liver. It's super benign. Taking it out would be more dangerous than leaving it in. So they're like, we leave this tumor in. Like for almost everyone who has it, they almost always leave it in unless it grows to a size where it actually starts hurting the other organs. And so that's why last year when they saw that it was pushing on my stomach, they're like, we need to do more tests on this. And I'm like, okay. So I got an MRI and they're like, you know, it grew a little bit. Or I think they actually already knew it grew from some other procedure they did or whatever. But the MRI showed that it did grow a little bit from like 10 years ago. But then they were like, we need to do another MRI in about a year so that we can compare the two MRIs. And so I talked to my doctor about that and she's like, yep, that's good. Let's schedule an MRI. So that's what I did today. That's why I have this. I had MRI with contrast. So I got that this morning. So I'll get the results from that soon ish. It's not like they're going to take it out anytime soon or anything like that, but I guess it's just, they just still want to keep an eye on it. The next procedure that they would do, like if they do get worried with the MRI results, the next procedure that they would do is called an endoscopic ultrasound. So I've had regular endoscopies where they put you under and then they go down your throat with a camera and do biopsies and stuff. But an endoscopic ultrasound is essentially an endoscopy, but they also do like an internal ultrasound, like the images of an ultrasound, but internal so they can see different things. And then if I get that done, they can also do a couple more biopsies of my esophagus to see how my esophagus is doing biopsy wise. But we don't know anything about that yet. It's kind of dependent on how the MRI comes out. And so I'll find that out soon. But again, I have an appointment with the gastroenterologist at the end of April. So whatever I hear from her, I will update you guys. If it's a big update, I might do another update video like this. But if it's a smaller update of just like, hey, everything's fine or whatever, then I might just update you guys in like a Sunday vlog or something. But yeah, these videos, again, these health updates are really hard for me to talk about because I want to make sure I'm explaining everything correctly because I know it's really easy for some other people to twist my words or make fun of me or whatever. And I just want to minimize that as much as I can, especially when it comes to my health, because it's something that I'm personally dealing with and it's scary and it's overwhelming and it's something I have to deal with every single day. And again, not every day is horrifically painful, but almost every day is at least discomfort and something like someone's choking me. And then there are other days that I feel worse again, like it's, hard for me because I just do think that I've been gaslighting myself a little bit of just like, oh no, you're fine. You're fine. When I just believe for me that if I'm actually just honest, then I can take care of myself better. I think that I've been diminishing my own pain because I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I don't want to sound like I'm blowing things out of proportion, but in reality I am sick and that's just hard for me. I just wanna process it and just take care of myself more, you know? Like, be more honest with myself, and if I need a special accommodation for something, then be okay with it, because that's just hard for me, you know? I don't like to be a burden to other people and stuff, but so it's just something that I need to process more and figure out more. But yeah, I guess that's really the whole update. If you have any questions or if I didn't explain anything properly, just ask me in the comments, but I just do hope that we can be nice, because again, this video is very, very hard for me to record, and so even if you have a question or something you can totally ask and I will answer as much as I can because I don't know fully everything but I just know what I experienced and I know what now at this point like three different doctors have told me and so yeah I guess that's gonna be it thank you for watching I hope that you're subscribed I am gonna do again another health update even if it's a little one in about a month or so but a lot of my other videos I do talk about food a lot and travel and lifestyle and stuff like that so yeah I guess that's gonna be it thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day I love you Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later bye Okay.